hopefully you'll make it through. Um, it's Power Rangers versus Alliance. This is again all of the matches pretty important and deciding on whether how many on how many tiebreakers because I think there's going to be tiebreakers. Yeah, this match is extremely important for Alliance. They like need to win this to actually be able to keep their life alive in this. And this is actually really funny. It's versus Power Rangers. So last year. In the TI qualifiers, Alliance got level one roast by Power Rangers and got knocked out from going to TI. So yeah. now they're versus PR with further life on the line. It's just kind of, it's just kind of, not like the word isn't irony there, but not one of those, one of those words. My English isn't working too well, but either way, it's still pretty funny yep. that they're playing versus Power Rangers to spit a life here. That is actually hilarious. You're right. It is a, a strange twist of fate. So we're gonna see I have banned out because you're playing against Alliance. So the Beast Monster um, and Doxia Elder Titan because we're realizing that those heroes are strong. And this is like what PR has been opening up with almost every game. Not only just PR, uh, like I think VP has been doing this a lot as well. Just the Venge Tire Blade right off the bat. Alliance, they've been actually opting for Bulldog's Batrider a lot and teams have been banning it quite early. It's pretty much Bulldog playing Batrider and Beastmaster almost exclusively, I want to say. Probably changed it up in the last series, but... Yeah, I... Power Rangers, when we saw them yesterday, they were still going for the Terra Blade Bend, sometimes the Tide as well, and they were having a bit of trouble yesterday, but today they've really pulled it back some. Um, they are sitting at a uh, okay 3 4, so they'll have to do what they can, and as you said, it's the Bat Rider coming out. Even into the Vengeful Spirit, they don't really care. It's just pretty much what they've been comfortable with lately, and they, they just feel like it's their best option right here. So. Whatever, works up for them. It's their decision to go. And the Bat Rider directly into the Vengeful. Either way, it can work out. Yeah, uh, you just have to be more careful. Maybe it's time to grab the Venge. Either way, we got ban. Uh, do you think that Alliance will ban out the Tide or something like the Slaughter against the Venge Terrorblade already coming out for Power Rangers? Uh, they they might, but I think they'll probably be aiming their bans at Arise. That's usually what teams tend to do when they play versus Power Rangers, just because he's like that. No, yeah, and like I said, right away, they ban out the mag. No shocker there. Don't want to be dealing versus Tower Blade Magnus, even though he doesn't benefit the most from the Empower. Still is quite good, because then he can farm a lot faster without the Metamorphosis. He's gonna be also getting rid of the Ember Spirit, so doesn't want to have that nice way of getting to deal with illusions. Um, yeah, as you said, I'm waiting for another Magnus ban. <laughs> uh, not Magnus, uh, another Arise by ban. Maybe yeah, guys, chug in this Red Bull, let me get the caffeine in. Maybe it's it could be the Puck, they played it last game for Power Rangers. It's not really like a big hero to ban because it's not had great success lately, but if they are focusing on Arise, they could ban that out if they want to. Not sure if it's the greatest option, though. Alliance starting to dip into some reserve time. It's also wondering how they're gonna draft the rest of their lineup. Obviously, Batrider pretty flexible in the whole. You can certainly just use it to get picks around the map by time for your carry or picks before you push. Um, just a lot of options. It will be the Tide ban out. Yep. You talked about. Good call. Yeah, just. Well, we've been seeing them do it all day, so. Yeah. Sure, and that's the other thing. I do wonder in these events. Obviously. Uh, sometimes they have straight back-to-back -back matches, and I know for us casters it's been hard to get a handle on what has been happening in other games. I imagine for the teams, unless they have someone running it for them, they might not always have the time, unless the games go long, to find out what the draft was, exactly how the things were played. Yeah, so. they definitely have teams, people scouting out. They also have, like, a bunch of teams have, like, coaches now, so... Yeah. And, yeah, but I wanted to take a glance, I look at it, and, yeah, Terrorblade in the... In the international qualifier so far has an 80% win rate with 31 kidding? picks, 7.0 7 7 kill death assist ratio. That's so ridiculous. That's actually quite absurd. That's higher than Life Stealer was at Manila. And yeah, P Power Rangers is seizing the opportunity, and they do with their third, fourth bands. They prioritize heroes that can take out the illusions and deal with Terror Blade. And that's the t uh, Timber Saw and the Ember Spirit. Not a big shocker seeing them ban those out. And they do grab the Earth Spirit for themselves, which is a hero that's just been, I mean, popular for a long time. He gives you a lot into your draft to stun. He gives you, he gives you lockdown. He gives you silence. He gives you teammate, and he gives you only potential in the laning phase. So just a solid hero pick in general. Yeah, and uh, Power Rangers with also Venge being there as some initiation help. A little bit of. Uh, 
te not tension, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit of the pressure relieved off of the Earth Spirit, unlike last game we saw with Fantastic Five, yeah. where it was all on that Earth Spirit. Yeah, and it's, it's a real support hero. Like, Vengeful doesn't really need items, he just he's just a Venge, you know? You 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 do what you do, you don't really need anything to enhance yourself. If you get items, they're just like, nice, I have items, guys, it's luxury, but Earth Spirit's gonna be able to get his items up, and then Vengeful with Terrible is just such good synergy, I mean... Vengeance Aura plus Metamorphosis is pretty absurd, and... Okay, this is pretty much standard alliance stuff right here. They picked up the Rubik for EGM, and it's not the best versus all three of those heroes. You don't really have opportunities to grab incredibly good spells. The stun on Vengeful and the swap, I guess, are two of the like big most notable ones. And I mean, if you can get Sunder, of course, but that probably shouldn't happen. Well, it should happen, but sometimes weird games going around. Uh, we've had... I agree with you, the Rubik uh, came out kind of interestingly early here, uh, maybe not the best things to steal, but if it's something they're really comfortable with, I like it. And also, as a roaming hero, right, as someone who can be smoked up out with the Batrider pick off, so just maybe come and deal with someone in mid. Yeah, and Alliance likes it a lot too. I think it's also just like a thing versus the Earth Spirit, like if he rolls in and he's so committed, Rubik is so just incredible to just take that, like, that mistake and make it a bigger mistake by pulling him even more out of position when he does uh, commit if he's in an overextended position. And yeah, like, you, like we were saying, it's Alliance is like a staple pick. And Power Rangers goes for the axe, so you mentioned that last game, should the team, or which team was it that emphasized so, on it? Was Secret, Secret that picked did axe? this. They actually ran it on Pop, so it was the support axe and they lost. Now, Power Rangers have a bunch of options here, right, of where they can run things. Um, I Do you expect it to actually be the offlane axe? Yeah, more than likely this game. He, they've already have their two supports. Terrorblade. I don't think that they would put, like, ter I don't think they would do something like that out of the box and put like Terrorblade mid or Axe mid. It's, I guess, a possibility. But the more obvious one is get, get him an Iron Talon and he can just jungle and do his own thing. Of course, if he does uh, go jungle while they don't have an off laner, it will relieve some pressure on the supports of Alliance to be in that lane zoning, so maybe they'll be able to gank whatever this mid ends up being for Power Rangers better. While Alliance, go with the Juggernaut! Uh, yeah, I mean, just a solid carry. There's not too much to say about it. Yeah, it's, a line, it's an Alliance draft. Like, there's really not, not much to say about it, and also Juggernaut into Earth Spirit can do quite well. You commented on the last game, it's hard for the Earth Spirit to find roll opportunities especially in the early laning phases. Later on, Silence is actually quite good versus Juggernaut at the same time. Yeah, and also the... Kind of nice to have the Axe Call going through the uh, spin, so yep. that if you're spin TPing, you do have Axe who so can come in and jump there. But... Yeah, he can call through the Blade Fury, he can dunk through the Blade Fury. Mm -hmm. The one thing that, at least for me, that I see that concerns me for Juggernaut versus Terror Blade is TB illusion when he uses reflection later on and if the game gets to that point the juggernaut illusion actually is probably is one of the strongest reflection illusions that comes out just because he crits on himself he gets all the benefits of just agility items so that's usually something that scares scares me when i see airblade but to not play a juggernaut and to not really see a juggernaut either way alliance is staple stuff things that they just really like to play comfort well Juggernaut here be forced into a Battle Fury to try and deal with Terrorblade Illusions? Uh, it is definitely a possibility. I don't know how much Loader really favors that. He goes, he's like liking the Vanguard a lot. Yeah, but... he goes, he, he's done some different things. Yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Wow, okay, so it's S4, S4 Batrider and they're gonna go back for the Bulldog Bear. So now they have a dual core and they have their pick off from the bat rider but yeah dual cord set up for alliance not going to put all the weight on the juggernaut versus the terror blade and we'll see how power rangers decides to respond do they want to go for some type of dual core as well or are they just going to pick arise a hero that just kind of supports and helps out the terror blade and engages him more into the game yeah um it's nice of course for power rangers to see everything before they pick it up anything in particular you think that does really well against the bat rider i know they have actually been running the d piece uh, quite a bit on power rangers but that feels really in all in on the push so. mm, nix nix does really well versus bat he helps set up for everything but it's not great it's not good versus jog it's not good versus lone druid at all uh i'm not really too sure what else arise likes to play he's kind of been playing a huge abundance of heroes and everything yeah. else that he plays is kind of just banned out like Dragon Knight, Mag, Puck, those are the ones that he's been playing a lot in these qualifiers so 
kind of funny. He. Okay. okay. He'll just go with the invoker. So that's an old pick that he used to play a lot more. Not really seen him have too much success on the hero. That actually kind of concerns me. Them picking that up. And Batrider versus Invoker in the lane can actually be really scary for Invoker because Invoker has like a super doo doo turn rate. He's actually like one of the worst if you get stickied up. However, they will have the Earth Spirit to be able to help out that lane if he wants to. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm a bit I'm a bit concerned with that the Invoker pick just because of how I've seen them play around it with Arise. It doesn't seem to fit their lineup all that great in comparison to the other heroes that they usually have. Yeah, I think it's also uh, going to be a concern of where the axe ends up going, whether he's going to jungle straight off the bat or actually try to head off, head out to that off lane. Because I feel like uh, if the supports don't need to be there zoning, obviously they can, Rubik can rotate mid, always be there to protect against the Earth Spirit, while one of the other ones is stacking, it can just cause some problems there. So, um, big things that we've seen for PR. Um, to have just a couple of communication issues that's why they've had some losses coming out already and for me one of the big things is that cheshire cat feeling a little bit off with his communication with the rest of the team but more importantly what are your predictions oh i'm, I'm going in on that already yeah yeah just kind of like randomly clicking them out but yeah, i agree with you though i watched the game yesterday where pr looked they looked great it was like 20 minutes of them being like not perfect execution but overall you could see they had a, a general idea of how they wanted to play with their team like overall team game and then hit like 19 minute mark and they chain fed like absolutely out of control something i've never seen i haven't seen in a long time it was literally like one died another guy died literally two steps from him another guy died right afterwards another person bought back died again it was just like super chain feed so definitely a bit of miscommunication a bit of mis teamwork coming out from them there but we'll see if they are adjusting this and we are gonna see cheshire cat he's just buys tangos oh. sorry whenever there's a pause i i get worried what if the world is exploding uh no but as you said just buying tangos yeah he's I think he tried to buy Iron Talon as well, because he walked away really quickly. Oh. But maybe we'll see if he decides to actually give some lane contestion, but I don't think he will. Like, Juggernaut is pretty good versus Axe in the laning phase, because I, mean, I don't really like having Axe as well, like, just alone in the off lane. That's kind of just asking for trouble. You're not really going to get anything. Yeah, not really something that's super viable right now. So I do am surprised he can... Iron Talon can also go check out the lane, right? And you can say, hey... Maybe everything's awful. I'm gonna go head to the jungle after you make sure you know what's down there. Although he wouldn't fare terribly well against Lone Druid either. Yeah, I think uh, the play is probably just the Iron Town. Maybe he's just gonna save his money though, like you were saying. He's just got the Tango's 500 gold saved up for the Iron Town if he wants to do that. Fisher Cat giving himself some options. While again, early ward rotations out. While on Alliance, they're all grouped up together, smoked up, looking for some slay. Heroes flashing oddly. Thank you, Dota 2. Yeah. Interesting smoke. They didn't decide to TP out the lanes this time. They go for just a smoke and run into the enemy jungle. See if they can get someone. They should be able to get up this uh, cliff before anybody has come on over. So they do get a really nice ward placement. Yo, PR Terrible. looks like they know what's up. Look at their positioning. I know. This is so nice. Oh my goodness. It's so beautiful. Will that be the telekinesis? Rubik trying to He's get got in range. Place. No. No. He can't he? get him. so deep. Oh, they get him. They're pulling him back. But this is like diving tier threes. Okay. That's just going to be some casual harassment. That was, that was pretty impressive by PR. It's like they actually knew exactly what Alliance was doing there. They had the position perfectly set up for them to go for that engagement. And I'm actually surprised that Alliance is sticking around here. Yeah, they're uh, trying to see if somebody else will come down. But obviously, as you said, PR know. They've seen it all. So. Yeah, they want to make sure that the Axe doesn't have a free jungle to just stack up. So they do block at least that one big camp. And it does look like Chester Cat is going to opt for that the non-Iron Town build because he saw that Alliance was running toward the top and kind of like Alliance thing that they've been doing. They do these aggro tri lanes and set Bulldog up for a 1v1. So Cheshire Cat is just going to cut the creep wave and get full free farm down here in the off lane. Yeah. So hopefully we'll work out for him. Oh, I mean, I shouldn't say hopefully. This, I just this, want... I think this actually benefits PR quite a bit, even though they're 
support duo isn't really the strongest in their safe lane, this axe is gonna get absolute free farm. On top, they're opening onto EGM. There is the roll in Metamorphos already. EGM gets healed, but it's not quite enough. Goddamn, though, taking heavy damage. They need a few more auto attacks with Big Num getting in the way. Aki trying to wrap around here. Also just working in onto Big Num. Can they do it? Has a roll up in one second. Aki, you're not in front of him. Oh, goodness gracious. This is not... Oh, never mind. I spoke too soon. Big Num. Realizing he couldn't really roll because he might get caught. Nice play there though from PR. Uh, they know that their supports are kind of weak, so right away they get the they're in, on the side in position with the ward as well. They get the quick jump on EGM, and that's a kill that they can take with Metamorphosis. But once Metamorphosis is down this lane, it becomes very difficult, and oh. their attack's gonna go right away. Yeah. Um, there will be a roll on in. Goddamn, taking quite a bit of harassment. A nice stun. Sloda isn't there to fight, and Terrorblade forced to back up. We'll have a salve though. Both these, both the carries up in that top lane though aren't really hitting CS, and... Well, versus the Axe, who's already sitting on pretty 15. Yeah, Bulldog's doing a really cool job though, I just wanted to point it out really quick, is that he's using his Spirit Bear not to just help him farm, but he's moving it over and blocking that, uh, the small camp so that the Axe doesn't get super, the super accelerated farm of both the Creep Wave and the small camp. Yeah. A very good, very good, uh, presence of mind there from Bulldog. Yeah, nice job. Coming out. Let's see if he does it again. 155, 156. He's walking oh, yeah. over again. And yep, every single time. This guy is actually so good at recognizing what he needs to do in his lane. I'm always really impressed as well. It's uh, kind of an odd thing to bring up, but Bulldog for a time was playing uh, at a very high level competitive, but also streaming quite a lot. And I, I was just really impressed that he was able to play so well, despite not spending all of his time, you know, in scrims, practicing, and so on. But yeah, the terribly it's suffering now though. They did get the first blood for him, which was a nice little boost, but he's definitely not going to be able to get any CS in that lane. The, like I was saying, the supports on the side of PR are quite weak in the laning phase until they get some levels, and every time Metamorphosis is up, he's not able to really get anything. Well, Loda going to uh, be ahead in that lane, as you said. Talk some about mid. You are worried about a rise in here. Batrider is, in fact, quite far ahead. Massive deny advantage. Yeah, that's... I didn't really expect that big of a deny advantage. To be quite honest, 9 is really high, but... Yeah, rise must just be missing a lot of CS. Must be having a little bit of trouble just... You have to really, like, if you have to play this matchup a lot to really get used to it, because you have to be sure not to really turn. Because if you do turn, you're gonna, you're gonna miss, that's probably just exactly how he's missing CS. He turns around for a second, just stutter stepping and making those small mistakes versus a bat rider can cost you the lane. So 16 and 10 up on S4 and only 8 and 0 up on a rise. Yeah, uh, for S4, obviously gonna mean that he'll be able to get out that blink. That's what he wants first. He might, he's already got a wind lay, so maybe he'll stop for the drums on the way. Uh, Radiance bottom tower. Yep, Bulldog has his level 5, he's got level 2 Rabbit, so he does attack and chase out the Axe just a little bit, but Axe gets the farm to small camp, cutting the waves just constantly still. 1000 gold with Tranquil Boots. Yeah, we're gonna have some early blinks out here, um, just because of the nature of both what Axe and how well the lane is going for Batrider. Who do you think is gonna be more effective for the that kind of first rotation? Top lane, there's actually gonna have some action going yeah. on. Okay. Okay. Shallow grave comes out, and with the spin onto Goddamn, they're gonna get the kill. And that was the metamorphosis. Big Num trying to throw a rock on through. Okay, nice. Dodge the bat right is up here. Gets a kill onto Big Num. Looking J4 as well, but that will go to Juggernaut. And the stun strike gonna be off the mark. Pretty close though, but. Yeah, this lane setup is actually working very well for them in the top lane. However, Axe is full free farming. That's kind of the trade-off as they're, they're doing. And it looks like the Axe is actually going to opt to go for that Vanguard first. Huh. Interesting. Do you think it's just uh, deciding that not enough health if he did go for the Blink first up against the heroes that they've picked on Alliance? Yeah, he's also just absolutely free farming. Yeah, that's so. a good point. What is he going to He's going to come out with like a five-minute Blink deck. He's like, hey, guys. What, <laughs> Who wants to fight? Where's my follow-up? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Makes a lot of sense, so. Uh, now there is the Forge Spirit up for Arise in mid, so maybe that'll help things get a little bit easier. And of course, Batrider did jump off of the lane to gank, so he's definitely got a farm and bond. Oh, we have a Pressure Cat in a little bit of trouble. There's a bear chasing him. He's gonna just try to walk it off. Can they get some root procs or anything here for Admiral Bulldog? No such luck. And the Batrider even. Another rotation off the lane, but this one not resulting in a kill. 
Yeah, this top lane's going super well though. You know, five, seven CS on Terrorblade, and he's not really even getting the best of levels because the tri lane, it's it's a full out tri lane. They're sticking the supports up there constantly. So Loda almost level five, EGM level four, and Bulldog picks up the Midas to accelerate his farm five minutes, five thirty nine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, he, he is uh, in a little bit of trouble. Gets dunked there. So first dunk of the game. Have a question on that, did they, for the compendium? Oh, that. Well, roll on to Loda, but of course he is spinning. Will he be able to get out here? The magic missile is at the ready. They drop it onto the Rubik. So changing target some, but with the healing ward, oh, immediately killed up there. But goddamn, taking a lot of damage, both from the Fade Bolt and Loda and the Telekinesis this will be enough. And it stuns two of them. J4 getting low here. One more auto attack, Loda. Oh, okay, but the auto attack from Rubik coming through. And this is a tri lane versus a dual lane right there. And they got absolutely decimated again. So this laning phase is coming out to be extremely beneficial now for Alliance. I didn't think that it would work out that well, but yeah, it's it's actually just crushing in PR and they're not really doing anything to adapt or to fix it up. But I thought maybe with the sun strikes and stuff, they'd be able to at least get a couple more kills up there. But no, oh, every time Metamorphosis is up, they're trying to go for these kills and it's only worked out once so far. Two deaths up on him and he's only got boots and a Wraith Band. And this is definitely the approach to... Uh, playing Tar versus Tower Blade. If he doesn't farm, he can be quite worthless. Yeah, not a hero that plays from behind, you know. But uh, Cheshire Cat, while, meanwhile, on bottom, has finished up that Vanguard. So it is going well for PR, and if he's able to continue cutting, of course, he will get up an early Blink Dagger, and maybe by the time there are a couple levels up on Arise, right, you can always just call into a Sun Strike. So, yeah. it'll be something. And PR is starting to, they should play to their strength, play around their axe. So level three is on the two supports, going toward the axe's lane. They actually even stacked up the ancients, so they want to accelerate the axe's timing for his blink dagger even more so off of that. Also, looking like they're thinking about going in onto Bulldog, the Earth Spirit. They do place a ward behind the tower. They, Bulldog just knows. Okay, well, dub Bulldog. Yep. They ditched Radiant's the whole top lane, so yeah. I guess that's that a little bit obvious. Maybe they should have even done this a little bit sooner, but... Yeah. I'm not quite sure how you get around that, right? As you just said, it's obvious when you're all out of the top lane, maybe you try to show one mid, act like that's where it's going on, but... Couldn't probably secure the gank. Now, yeah, now mid is like, hey guys, something's funky going on. Yeah, that's for a second. I'm gonna go for this top rune. <laughs> but he might actually die in the, when he gets back there. Well, there are four. Where is... Oh, the Terrorblade's off jungling. It's always an See option. They get him. Ew. Big dumb rolls in. Gets oh. the silence, but they get the Firefly off first, and he's gonna be able to get out of there just fine. Well done. There are also gonna be TPs coming in. Big dumb in a lot of trouble. They throw out a stun onto S4. Where is the Telekinesis? They're actually looking for the Axe EGM. This is gonna be a harder kill with that Vanguard. J4 may be able to get away. Earth Spirit dies to a neutral or kills himself. And okay. Well. <laughs> At least nobody died. Oh no, yeah. top lane, Omni Slash up onto goddamn. He's trying to run, but nope, he gets out by Loda alone. Oh yeah, not exactly uh, the start that PR were hoping for. For Alliance, this looks really good. They need this win. We stressed it already. They need this win, and starting with a 5,000 gold lead at 9 minutes in, that's a good way. Yeah, and this is. I mean, usually they have. Like I was saying, they usually have a rise, at least lately from what I've been seeing, on a hero that can get involved early. He can come around and assist his team to make sure that the lanes go better. And as the invoker, he's not really able to do that. The only thing he can really contribute is a sun strike to help out his buddies. And he even, I mean, he kind of has to, but he goes for the Midas. And he's just kind of jungling. He's not really having a presence on the map. So this is, for PR at least, it's going to be really all in on the axe at this point to try to make a ton of space for his Tower Blade, who is... I don't, I don't even think suffering is the right word. Just getting getting owned. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, okay. He it's not even on it's not even like on him too much. He's getting maybe a little bit out of position from time to time, but the uh, aggressive tri lane and the decision from Alliance to do that is just working out and benefiting them quite heavily. For Alliance, how would you suggest they capitalize on this lead? Blink on S4, play around your lone druid, up, get some towers. Okay. Well, they are gonna have Admiral Bulldog start working on this. He doesn't even wait for the creep wave. He just forces out the glyph, and then he's gonna come back for the wave. Oh. Okay. Axe though. He's invisible. There's oh, this a... actually is, it could be a huge opportunity for them. They need another. They need a port down there though. Maybe even two ports. Oh, he no, just care about opens it. with the battle hunger. Not 
I agree with you. Oh no, Cheshire Cat. There's gonna be sneaky napalm coming out. They go with the lasso. That is the blink reveal. Admiral Bulldog and the spin on top of Cheshire Cat. It is not looking good. He actually got some counter helixes off and did a good amount of damage because of how long the Vanguard uh, made him take to die, but not enough. Nice. They actually did group up and go for the push. Usually when I say something completely wrong and people do the exact opposite, especially at this uh, like the 10 minute mark. But no, they they play around Bulldog. They Cheshire can't kill, and if, yeah, there's no there's no way to even react from PR. So it was actually good that nobody ported down to try to go for the Bulldog kill because Alliance was in position to go for the flank. Yeah, and that blink of the the reveal of the blink doing good work. If they also get the tier 2 here, this is really nice. Just a good amount of gold will be going to everybody on Alliance. Yeah, and EGM has Forge Spirits as well too in the mid lane, so he's just standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Arise. Free farming. That is, uh, moralizing. So, well, they, uh, will take a tier 2. They just pushed down bottom. <laughs> That's... I don't know what to say here. It, it feels like PR, I mean, they're obviously going to lose a huge chunk of change due to that will become a huge chunk of change behind. Uh, they want the blink on Cheshire Cat. They do seem to have to wait for that before the engagement, but maybe they need some mistakes out of Alliance, beating them in deeper. I, I'm unsure because it feels like this is Alliance's game to lose, even though it's about 12 minutes in. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you. They just don't seem like they were... They, Kind of prepped for that aggro Charlie, but at the same time they didn't. Like they went for that like nice little cheeky level one play where they went on the Rubik right away. But after that they didn't. It's like that was their only triumphant play that they had in that entire top lane. That was like their whole plan. It's like oh god, all right, we get the kill, but then now what? We're just kind of sitting here. Our terrible is not farming at all. He's 3,000 net worth. He's less than the Rubik still. Even though Axe has really good farm and everything, he doesn't have his blink still. And he will be getting it after this Ancient stack, but how much will he really be able to achieve with it if uh, aligns just together, especially with Healing Ward? Yeah, it's a big question of... Obviously, some spin RNG will help there. Um, another... Oh, they do actually have the level 6 on the Earth Spirit, so maybe, you know, they get a huge call, but I can't imagine Alliance will make that call positioning more than once, right? Yeah, and especially with Healing Ward, uh, Juggernaut is quite good at... And is, uh, that's another thing that we didn't really comment on during the draft, is that Healing Ward is very good versus Earth Spirit, because, you know, the obvious reason Magnetize pretty much gets counteracted entirely by Healing Ward. Yeah, so Luda hanging out in the top lane again. He's got Omni Slash. Somebody comes to bother him. He's just going to beat him up. Uh, and uh, all right, as we already talked about, he had such a hard time in the mid lane. He's using the Midas to try and catch up, but only with level 9 versus the level 11 on the Lone Druid and Axe. So. That was cute, what AGM did there. He had Forge Spirits summon summoned initially, then he stole Forge Spirits again, and he had three Forge Spirits up, or four Forge Spirits up. Yeah, EGM making all the units. Here we go, another smoke coming out from Alliance. They want to grab someone, get Loda another kill. They try, oh, the Dia tries for a scan because they want to know if Loda has backup. There is the call, the Sun Strike as well, and Loda will be blown up. First and blink usage. Alliance unable to get anything out of this smoke. Yeah, Loda playing maybe a little bit too far up. Buddies were already coming in as well to help him out. But yeah, nice, nice play there from PR, still showing signs of life. Big pick off for them. Yeah, it seems like just a... Uh... So this is the interesting thing. I don't know how much you've ever thought about Scan, but it feels like there uh, could have been an opportunity for, as you said, Loda was kind of far up, could have maybe used a Scan to check if people were coming towards him. Just the way that the Dyer actually scanned right over here to make sure that there weren't folks coming towards them. Yeah, and is under attack. Scan's been... Some teams use Scan a lot more than other teams. I think we saw Empire... In that last series, didn't even use one scan yeah. the entire game, so... I mean, it's still a relatively new thing, and Dota... Not known for teams who... Uh, not all the teams known for instantly adapting. Yeah. Bulldog, though, pretty much has his Radiance finished up. A thousand gold and his Relic. He has Boots, Midas, Raindrops. He's actually super farmed for 14 minutes. Well, it's Bulldog on Lone Druid. I'm not quite sure what PR expected. Yeah. So. Short lane Bulldog, 117 CS at the 14 minute mark. He may not even be paying attention and still getting those types of numbers, but obviously, big game for them. Uh, Loda is working towards that Battle Fury. Yep. Should get it at a decent timing. And uh, again, it's he can go off and do his own thing just because Batrider got this early blink. And as you said, Bulldog about to have the Radiance ripping on through towers. Don't even need it because they have Forge Spirits. Forgot about that. Yep. Oh, oh nice denied though from Arise though. 
Yeah. Now, it's looking like he may want to go in, but there is a ward, and they do see it. The sentry ward does catch that out, so... Safely de-warding with four spirits. They are getting a lot of utility, so I didn't... Obviously, there's a bunch of different spells you can steal from the Invoker's Toolkit, but definitely having fun with EGM, latching onto that one. Alliance has beautiful wards right now. They have a vision of the of the axe right now. S4 looks like he tries to go in, but four spirits actually oh. catch vision of him. Arise yeah. doesn't get the Arise actually went for Yules. Yes, that he did. Oh, I've not seen that in a long time on an invoker actually. It's been pretty much since the change happened, everybody started going for the, the drum build and then when drums got nerfed, they still went the drum build and then into the Aghanims, but Yules is a uh have a change up there. Well, Arise clearly feeling like there's something he's got to do there. Um, might be worried about the Omni Slash. Yeah, I mean, it's be worried about the Omni Slash. He's, if the Bat Rider like mislinks, yeah. he can get kills off on him. But yeah, it's a it's not you right. Change up from what we've been seeing. I mean, it's still like it's still an interesting item that works on the hero, but it's just fallen out of the norm. Yeah, are you feeling that it isn't as optimal as the? Uh, Drums the Aghanims would have been? It's just, yeah, it's different, you know, drums is like, you get your drum and you're able to actually fight and stuff early on, because without drum, if you're going for that Aghanims rush, you're pretty damn weak on Invoker, but, I, I mean, he, this is just, I guess, player preference at this point, going for the Yules. And Alliance, yeah. Alliance is doing a great job, though, having this, like, their way their options are placed out. And, uh oh Star is going for a Roshan right now, what yeah. the? Uh, Eskel will actually get stunned up here, tries to get up to the high ground. While folks are leaving, that's gonna be a nice stolen under image. They managed to grab out Goddamn and they get the root. Just such a quick pick on this Terror Blade. He has no health pretty much. Oh, they're not done yet. Alliance looking for more. Cheshire Cat will have Blink at the ready, so looking for a place to TP out. Big Numb as well, gonna do the roll TP away. They drop Nice Scan, but it's too little too late. So only one pick there for Alliance. Yeah, the lines tried to scan there to take out the spirit, but they don't find him, and I'm just a bit dumbfounded actually because that was. I mean, I don't even want. I don't even know if I can call it ambitious, but going for that Roshan play was just in, maybe a bit silly. Like they know that Alliance has. They have to know that Alliance has these aggressive wards up, and yeah, Alliance has pretty much full vision of the entire area that PR has to do anything. Also, Rosh would have taken them a really long time. Yeah, it's the. Uh... Just because of the lack of form on the Terror Blade. Well, Chester Cat, uh, he wants to get a big goal here. There are a lot of heroes in the pit, but they're kind of spread. He could maybe catch Admiral Bulldog and a Loda, but no such luck. There's so many other people around. Substrike attempting to snipe the Roshan won't be there. And Loda now running around with an Aegis. Radiance top tower is under this is... I don't, I don't mean to be disrespectful for the game, but it's... Uh, uh, I feel I do think Alliance need to screw up for it to get back to PR. Yeah, the Tower Blade's getting a little bit of space though. He's got his Dragon Lance at least finished up. He's got his one item, and they do have the methods to be able to win this game. But it's it's looking grim, of course. Like the the Lone Druid has absolute, if not more than absolute, free farm. Juggernaut has pretty darn good farm as well with the Battle Fury already finished up. Or has got pretty much his core items finished too. Blink and Force Staff. Even even EGM has a mech, which is pretty out of the box for a Rubik to have. What does this perfect high ground defense look like for PR? Because obviously not so great for them to defend to tier two. They're gonna have to be worried about the siege coming up the ramp. They really hard for them to actually defend versus this. Their supports are super under leveled still. They're only level six and healing ward plus lone druid. They don't really have too many great options to just get up kill the bear like. It's going to be getting weaved up, it's going to have Healing Ward behind it. Even if they pop meta Metamorphosis or use Invoker to try to chip at it, it's going to be inevitable that Alliance takes out this tower. Yeah, then uh... Slowly but surely. Poke. 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 At least it's a cute bear bringing down your tower, you know? Panda. No yeah, nothing like a panda uh, destroying homes. Oh, uh, okay, Cheshire Cat immediately telling him he's just really hit what he wanted there. He's in a bit of trouble. Goddamn, actually doing some good damage out on the road of the bear. The pullback, even with the Yule, Cheshire Cat still ends up going down. Meatball and the deafening blast, but the Omni Slash taking out Old Spirit on the back of the fight. S4, despite being magged up, will probably survive out here. And goddamn full. Rax, me uh, melee going down. They can also just go bot up on Alliance, although the cooldowns are short due to the low levels. Sorry, death timers are short. Where did, uh, 
What did Arise use his spells on? I don't know. Uh, he used a Meat Ball and Deafening Blast to go on the uh, Bat Rider as he came oh, okay, down from yeah. the Yules. Gotcha, yeah. I didn't catch on the swipe. Yeah, okay. Well, I thought they actually might have a little bit more life in them because they were starting to creep up, but no, they actually can't even contest versus Alliance's high ground push at this point. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, a bit of a straightforward game that we had here. I believe we have one more after this before we head into tiebreakers, if there are tiebreakers. Right now, it's looking like there's a good chance there will be, as this puts Alliance at 5-4, and four, Team Empire also at 5-4. and four. We'll have to see how the results are going for other teams, as we do have Escape playing.